In this video, we're going to be talking about how do we test for coronavirus. You see a lot of things on the news right now about there being coronavirus test kits out there, and I thought I'd make this video to kind of help people understand more about what are these test kits doing and why does it work. And so the very first thing you'll do is, you know, if you're a patient in a medical exam room and you're displaying symptoms of having the coronavirus or you want to know if you have the coronavirus, the first thing they're going to do is swab your cheek cells because we know that Coronavirus is a respiratory syndrome, so it's going to be infecting your respiratory cells. So when we swab your respiratory cells, um, we're going to have things that look like this. It's going to have some kind of plasma membrane. It's going to have a nucleus. There's going to be a lot of stuff inside of the cell. And so the first thing that we do is we're going to export this into lysis buffer. And so what lysis buffer does is it basically takes your cell and it makes the membrane, the plasma membrane, as well as the nucleus, which is another plasma membrane, permeable. And the goal here is to get all the stuff inside of your cell out because we want to start looking at what is going on here because in the case that you were infected by the coronavirus, there's going to be genetic material as well as coronavirus proteins inside of this cell. But we don't know that yet. So once we've made your cell permeable and we've got out the genetic material, the next thing we're going to do is centrifuge it. And what happens when we centrifuge it is the weight of whatever is inside of um, your cell is going to get pulled down by its density and by its mass. And so um, DNA is, and as well as RNA are fairly light things, so they're going to stay pretty high up in the solution. But heavier things like proteins and your phospholipid bilayer, as well as your organelles and your ribosomes, are going to get kind of condensed and pressed down into this little pellet at the bottom of your uh, tube, your centrifuge tube. So after we've centrifuged it, we do have in your supernatant the DNA as well as the RNA, and so all the genetic material that we care about is in this top part of the tube. What we do next is we're going to place this supernatant into DNA ace free water. DNA ace free water is important because basically if you have viral genes present in your supernatant, the last thing we want to do is actually denature any of these things. So having DNA ace is free water means that we're not going to run the risk of actually destroying any of the precious genetic material we're trying to test for. So once we've got this solution transferred into good clean water, the next thing we're going to do is add a PCR master mix. And so this PCR master mix, if you remember from biology, is a mixture of primers that will be specific to conserved regions of the coronavirus genome. That's the reason why it was so important for us to uh, sequence your coronavirus genome, as well as you know, continue to do this on many cases because these viruses mutate. They do still have conserved regions of genetic material. And so in these test kits that the government sends out, we're basically having primers that are specific to what we've identified as regions that are the same throughout all other uh, cases of coronavirus so that we can say definitively, yes, you do have these coronavirus genes. So we're going to provide DNTPs. These are the ATGC. So we need to provide these, and we also provide DNA polymerase that can withstand high temperatures up to 95 degrees Celsius, as well as salts to help stabilize and activate the DNA polymerase. And I'm going to start thermocycling. So, um, you know, this is just PCR. Don't worry about understanding all of the details if you're not quite familiar with it. But basically, the point is that we have primers in the master mix, which comes in that test kit that comes from the government right now that helps us identify um, those conserved regions of the coronavirus genome. So if you don't have the coronavirus, these primers are not going to have anything to stick to. So when we do our actual PCR, our polymerase chain reaction, to amplify the DNA that you have present inside of your cell, we still won't actually know, or we will or will not know, if you have it. So if you do have it, the viral genes will get amplified. And then the final thing we're going to do after we've amplified your genome sufficiently, and this generally takes a few hours, is we'll place the amplified genetic material into an agarose gel. That's another thing from biology. Basically, because DNA has a very negative charge to it due to its sugar phosphate backbone, it will be drawn towards a cathode, which is a positive end of the gel. So as we put in a ladder, as well as a positive control, a negative control, and then the actual patient's genetic material that we've just amplified, we will be able to very quickly tell if you do have the coronavirus based on a band that appears. And so this ladder here has units of Daltons. They're essentially units of mass. Um, heavier things are going to be take longer to get through this gel because the gel is very viscous. 
So, um, you know, the lighter stuff is going to be here. We do know that there's a certain size of the coronavirus genome that we are looking for. So this makes up our positive control. Our negative control will have another band that we are familiar with. And then when we actually run your genetic material through this or whoever's genetic material through it, we will see a band appear here or not. And so if we don't see a band appear here, that indicates that you do not have the coronavirus. And if we do, then that means that you do have the coronavirus because you, or it, it's a very, it will add credence to our belief that you have the coronavirus and we would need additional testing. But at this point, you know, we would have other pieces of information such as, are you symptomatic? Are you coughing and sneezing? And, you know, do you have a fever? So um, this is how our coronavirus tests are working. I hope this stuff helps. Um, it's honestly not super complicated. If you can just understand this process, I think it would help uh, a lot more people just understand the gist of what's going on here. Let me know if you have any questions and thank you all for watching.